The story of the Civil War is told not only in words and pictures, but also in places. The National Park Service preserves and administers most of the important battle sites of the war. At each, visitor centers present interpretive exhibits. Ranger talks, often on the sites where the action took place, can further enhance one's picture of those four dramatic years of war. At the Civil War parks, there are far more physical remains than simply guns, although we can see some massive collections of cannon, especially at Shiloh and Vicksburg, in a variety of sizes and types. Several masonry forts are preserved much as they existed at the war's end. Fort Sumter, repeatedly assaulted by Union warships after its capture, still stands, but it's no longer the vast three-tiered fortification it was in early 1861. This, however, is where the war began. It's reached by a pleasant boat trip in Charleston Harbor. Battered Fort Pulaski, near Savannah, partially repaired after its capture by the Federals in 1862, is now one of our most impressive Civil War structures. Living history demonstrations at many parks provide special insight into the action of the war. Some may be as ordinary as a sentry pacing his rounds. Others, more graphic, bring us far closer to the horror of battle and its aftermath. At several parks, the number and variety of statues are astonishing. General Lee is portrayed on the splendid Virginia Memorial at Gettysburg. A determined General Grant sits astride his horse at Vicksburg. Other generals, Stonewall Jackson at Manassas, Albert Sidney Johnston at Shiloh, and George Meade at Gettysburg, for example, are among the many commanders whose heroic exploits are commemorated in bronze and marble. Some statues are genuinely startling. At Vicksburg, Confederate General Lloyd Tillman is shown at the moment of his death at Champion Hill. Ordinary soldiers, most anonymous, are usually presented in characteristic poses that typify the military skills of thousands of their comrades. Sweetly, even unit mascots are not ignored, including famous Old Abe, the War Eagle of the 8th Wisconsin. Some statues are more symbolic than realistic. Gutson Borglum, famous sculptor of Mount Rushmore, carved the bronze North Carolina Memorial at Gettysburg, representing the gallant forward surge of Pickett's Charge. Smaller monuments may simply show martial subjects in dramatic forms. To us today, some Civil War statues may seem romanticized and perhaps overly sentimental. But the last half of the 19th century was a sentimental era, and the art of the times was an expression of deep and honest feelings. At Antietam, the sunken road is much the same as it was at the time of battle. Some parks, notably Gettysburg and Vicksburg, include memorials that are large and elaborate structures. They, with the hundreds of statues and markers, are an expression of gratitude to the men who sacrificed so much on this very ground. At Gettysburg, the high watermark of the Confederacy recognizes the point where Pickett's charge was stopped. This was the end of the Southern invasion of the North. The passage of decades has nearly obliterated most of the earthworks dug by the men in blue and gray. Many are gone. Others can barely be traced. Even the remains of the vast crater at Petersburg scarcely hint at its appalling size. In some cases, Careful stabilization has preserved fragile examples of Civil War fortifications. One of the most astonishing relics of the war is the Federal gunboat Cairo. She was sunk near Vicksburg in 1862 and salvaged piecemeal a century or more later. She was restored and today visitors can go on board and explore this remarkable naval treasure. 
At the site of Andersonville, the notorious Confederate prison, parts of the stockade have been reconstructed. But here it's the sheer size of the site that startles visitors. The nearby cemetery represents the end of agony for thousands of prisoners. We owe it to the soldiers of the war to visit their cemeteries, which are adjacent to many parks. The heart-wrenching word unknown appears on thousands of markers. Lincoln's Gettysburg Address was delivered at what is now a federal cemetery. At Shiloh and elsewhere, burial trenches were sometimes used for the countless dead. This one is Confederate. Nothing else was possible. Authentically reconstructed or restored, Civil War buildings are among the most popular attractions for visitors today. A number of period structures stand now on their original sites, and some are furnished and open to the public. Appomattox Courthouse, where much of the original village looks now as it did when the war ended, is by far the most elaborate restoration. The McLean home has been rebuilt and is now seen in its authentic 1865 appearance. The thoughtful statue in the Lincoln Memorial on the Mall in Washington, D.C. is itself a very special Civil War monument. Ford's Theater, where the war's last great tragedy occurred, has been authentically restored. Components of many important Civil War sites are not under park service management and are unhappily open to modern development. Essential sites are badly fragmented, including Stones River National Battlefield in Tennessee. Here at the Hazen Monument, the country's oldest intact Civil War memorial, a thoroughfare carries heavy traffic just past the wall, and an industrial plant is across the street. A few Civil War parks have hosted veterans' reunions. In 1917, at Vicksburg, about 8,000 veterans of both sides met on the sites where they had fought as enemies so long before. At Gettysburg in 1938, the few remaining veterans of the battle met on its 75th anniversary and viewed the monuments. Federals and Confederates shared their reminiscences. It was a unique and fleeting moment for America. Today, on the hallowed ground where the fighting of the Civil War took place, we can best envision the reality of the war itself. Wartime photographs and drawings are invaluable, of course, but visits to the actual sites give a third dimension to our understanding of their stories and to the memory of the men who took part in some of the most momentous events in our country's history. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.